Hey folks, it's great to see your smiling faces this Saturday morning. I'm gonna kick off with some coffee. Mm. Is it not just the best in the morning? And roll the intro. Right, okay, so I'm Craig Hume, Managing Director at Utopia Computers, an awesome system builder of incredible gaming PCs, workstations, and laptops based in Scotland. In this very channel, I'm gonna share tips with you, help you choose the right technology for your needs, discuss the tech industry, as well as offering up lessons I've learned from running a business all these years. If that sounds like your thing, be sure to hit subscribe. Today, I wanna to take you through how to build the ultimate desktop workstation for Redshift. That's right, over the next five minutes or so, I'm gonna be guiding you through choosing your processor, your memory, graphics cards, even storage requirements so that you can get the very best out of this incredible piece of software, which is the Redshift rendering engine for 2020. Wait a second, hold on. Maybe there's a few of you that don't actually know what Redshift is. So without further ado, let's have a quick rewind and let's give you a whistle, top, a whistle stop tour of this amazing piece of software. Redshift is a powerful and flexible GPU accelerated renderer. GPU rendering means that the power of your graphics card or multiple graphics cards, a little bit more on that in a bit, are used for rendering instead of using your processor. GPU rendering doesn't load your CPU at all. GPU rendering is incredibly fast, so with that, Redshift has been built to meet the specific demands of creative individuals and studios of every size. Although at Utopia, it's worth mentioning, it tends to be larger studios that we've found using Redshift. Redshift excels at rendering larger, complicated 3D projects faster than the competition. Think Octane Render. In fact, if you like Octane, check out my video on that below. It does also do this while remaining stable and producing incredible results at speed. So now we know what Redshift is. How the heck do we build the best desktop workstation for Redshift? Well, when we're thinking about this, we want to start at the heart of any system, the processor. So what CPU is the very best choice for Redshift? Well, as I mentioned in the introduction, Redshift is a GPU accelerated renderer. That means our CPU will have very little impact on the time it takes to produce renders from Redshift. It will have an impact on loading your scenes and depending on what other applications you're using, think about things like Adobe's Creative Suite or 3D Studio Max, then you, you still want to concentrate on the processor with a high clock speed. On the other hand, it's worth noting, if you're thinking about a CPU rendering engine like Arnold, then you're gonna have to look for a processor that's got more cores. Now today, I'm gonna focus on the high clock speed option because we're recommending how you build a system specifically focused for GPU rendering. And in that case, my top pick is the Intel Core i9-10900X. This awesome processor strikes the right balance with a good boost clock of 4.6 gigahertz. That's gonna mean it's quick to load scenes and complete any processing that uses CPU compute quickly enough, and plenty of PCI Express lanes to support all our graphics cards, up to four. To more on that in a little bit. Slower processors are available, but they will have limited PCI lanes, meaning that a maximum of two graphics cards to be used. Given that this is the ultimate build, we're not gonna talk about them in this video. So it's worth asking the question, do more CPU cores make Redshift faster? As I mentioned previously, due to Redshift being a GPU renderer, more cores will have very little impact on the performance of this renderer. Does Redshift work better with Intel or AMD? The truth is there's a negligible differences between AMD or Intel chips in Redshift. The key again is high clock speed and plenty of PCI lines for all those GPUs that you're gonna want. Another question we get asked is, do Xeon chips work well in Redshift? Xeon chips in the past would have been necessary in order to get enough PCI lanes to drive multiple GPUs. However, these days, both Intel and AMD have better priced options and frankly, better performing options, like the aforementioned i9-10900X. It's worth noting that Xeon chips also require more expensive memory, more expensive motherboards, so overall it makes them a very poor choice for a Redshift-focused workstation. We still get asked sometimes, do dual CPU workstations work well in Redshift? I threw this question in because, you know, it's, it's worth putting it out, but I think if you've been paying attention, you'll already know that Redshift is GPU-focused, and that means it doesn't matter how many CPUs you throw at it, it's not gonna help your performance. Ho ho ho, onto the juicy bit graphics cards. Okay, so what is the best graphics card for Redshift? As I mentioned already, the graphics card is the driving force behind this software. 
what you choose here is going to make the biggest impact on your rendering performance. There are three things we need to consider when we are thinking about graphics cards for Redshift. At number one, the speed of the card itself. At number two, how much memory the card has. And at number three, how many cards do we want? So let's answer all those questions. What is the fastest graphics card for Redshift? The fastest GeForce GPU as of the 2nd of May 2020 is the NVIDIA Titan RTX. This monster card sits top of the heap when it comes to rendering in Redshift. But proceed with caution, its cooling design means you can only fit a maximum of two of these cards in your PC. It's also incredibly expensive, meaning that it's poor value for money. So what's the best value for money and most upgradable option? Well, the ever so slightly more tame RTX 2080 Ti is the bad boy here. This card is the performance sweet spot for getting the very best out of Redshift. So Craig, do AMD GPUs work at all in Redshift? Well, currently Redshift only supports Nvidia because it needs Nvidia's CUDA cores. So unfortunately, you have to choose Nvidia for Redshift. Um, but it is worth noting that Redshift developers are working on being able to use AMD cards in the future. Okay, so how much VRAM do I need for Redshift? VRAM is the, the memory that's found on your graphics card. It's the limit of how complex scenes can be rendered effectively. Though Redshift does support out-of-core rendering, which will support system memory usage if there's not enough dedicated graphics memory available. But it comes with a reduction in speed, so it's best to get video cards with enough RAM. As I'm giving my recommendations for the ultimate build for Redshift, that 2080 Ti GPU is going to give you a whopping 11 gigabytes of VRAM, with room to add more cards, giving even more available memory in the future. So will multiple graphics cards make Redshift run faster? Yes, yes, and yes! Redshift scales beautifully with multiple GPUs. The limit on a desktop system is four GPUs with server options being available should you need even more. You can mix the models of cards should your budget not allow you to just throw four 2080 Ti cards in there. And if you're building a system on a lower budget, having multiple lower end cards may give you a performance increase over one high end card. If this sounds like you, then get in touch and we can talk about it. So does Redshift support Quadro GPUs? Quadro cards are seriously impressive pieces of technology built for reliability and stability. They can deliver the goods for Redshift, but for the overwhelming majority of users, they're not worth the much higher cost over a GeForce card. GeForce cards are just as fast while being exponentially cheaper. This means you can often get four, five times the rendering performance by sticking with GeForce cards rather than going with the same cost with Quadro. So does Quadro benefit Redshift at all? Well, yeah, there is one major key benefit, and that's VRAM. If you need lots, then Quadro cards will offer a staggering 48 gigabytes of VRAM on a single card. This has the potential to render at higher resolutions and complex scenes without running out of video memory. They also should be more reliable in the long term. Quadro cards are designed to run under maximum load for extended periods of time. But it's worth noting that we have hundreds of GeForce cards out in the field They've been part of rendering farms and all sorts for years, and we've not experienced any real issues with reliability. Okay, so let's move on from graphics cards to system memory. How much RAM does Redshift actually need to perform? Well, 32 gigabytes of RAM is our sweet spot in our ultimate Redshift workstation. This is gonna be more than enough for even the most complex of scenes. For the aforementioned i9-10900X, pair it up with DDR4 3600 RAM for the very best performance. Now, where are we going to store everything? Let's talk about storage. What is the best storage for Redshift? Well, in this type of workstation, remembering that we are building the ultimate Redshift desktop, you want to opt for an NVMe M.2 drive, something like the likes of Western Digital's Black Drives. I made a whole video on NVMe and I'll link it in the description below. These drives are super fast and very reliable. Value for money wise, prices are very competitive at the moment. And for the performance gains, it's really not worth considering skimping here. So what storage configuration would I recommend? Well, go with the M.2 NVMe drive for your operating system. Redshift and any other applications you use frequently can all be thrown on that drive. 
put another drive in there for live project files and perhaps a set of mechanical drives for long-term backup. These could be configured with some sort of RAID to give you a form of redundancy. I'm not going to spend too much time here as I think most clients looking for a Redshift system will be storing their project files and renders on a dedicated storage server to give them that extra level of security over not losing any valuable project data. So to wrap up and conclude this video, well done and hanging in there. To build your ultimate Redshift desktop workstation, you're going to need an Intel Core i9-10900X with up to four NVIDIA RTX 2080 GPUs. Pair that with 32 gigabytes of RAM, an NVMe M.2 drive, power it all with a 1200 to 1600 watt power supply, sit it in a case the likes of the Corsair Air 520 or the Fractal Define XLR2, and that's gonna give you plenty of power, plenty of airflow for all this juicy hardware. If you're interested in buying a Redshift workstation for myself, then please check out the range of high performance Redshift systems in the link below. If you've got any questions about Redshift or anything tech related, drop me a comment. If you haven't already hit subscribe, please do so. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video already. And oh, if you are in the creative industry and you want to share your work, link it down below. I want to see what you're up to. Take care and cheers.